photosynthetic Z scheme. Introduction to photosynthesis has been given in the last video. Here a detailed explanation is given for the conversion of water and carbon dioxide into oxygen and carbohydrates. Within the Z scheme we have two different photosystems. They are referred as a photosystem 1 and a photosystem 2. Photosystem 1 was discovered first, only then photosystem 2 was discovered. So in the Z scheme, though we begin from P680, but this was first discovered and hence it is called as a PS1. This is a PS2. PS1 is also called as a P700, where the 700 refers to the wavelength that it absorbs. This particular system absorbs a wavelength around 700 nanometer. P680 absorbs a wavelength of 680 nanometer. There is a standard reduction potential. From a more negative reduction potential, slowly downwards it is moving towards a positive reduction potential. Now within this, let us start with a photosystem 2. The active site of photosystem 2 complex contain a special pair of chlorophyll A molecules. They are held very closely together in a particular orientation. This pair is referred as a P680. As I said, since it is major absorption band has a peak at 680 nanometer. Now whenever such a photon hits this P680 system, or that photon is also called as an exciton because it is exciting the P680 system. So once such an exciton is taken up by the P680, slowly it is getting excited. This excited P680 system will lose an electron. Whichever electron that it is losing will be taken up by several electron carriers and it is slowly passed on to the photosystem 1 or the P700 system. Now as the P680 is getting excited, the excited P680 will act as a very strong reducing agent and it has started to reduce by giving away its electron. Once it has given away its electron, that excited P680 system will be converted into a cationic form. So once it is converted into a cationic form, now it will act as a very strong oxidizing agent. Since it is a very strong oxidizing agent, it is in thirst for the electrons. So slowly it will try to gain the electrons and slowly drop back to the P680. How does it get the electron will create a driving force for the splitting of water molecule as we discussed in our last class. So when a water molecule splits into oxygen, protons and electrons, these electrons are taken up by this cation and slowly it will come back to its normal position. So the cycle is P680 getting excited, acting as a strong reducing agent, giving away its electron to the electron carriers. Slowly it is converting back to a cation. That cation will act as a strong oxidizing agent and takes electron from the splitting of water molecules and get back to its normal position. In the splitting of water molecule, this is catalyzed by an oxygen evolving complex or an oxygen evolving center which is a manganese and a calcium center. This oxygen evolving complex will provide the electron to the P680 system through a tyrosine which is present in between. So in between we also have a tyrosine. That immediate electron will be given by the tyrosine where the tyrosine will be converted into a cationic radical and tyrosine will take up an electron from the splitting of water molecule. Well, getting back to the photosystem. Once the P680 getting excited and giving away its electron, that electron is accepted by the first electron acceptor called as pheophytin. This pheophytin slowly passes on the electron into a quinone iron complex. Later on it passes to a plastoquinone, to an iron sulfur protein, cytochrome B6F complex. Later on it is going to the plastocyanin. Plastocyanin is the connecting link between photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Now just uh, coming to the uh, various parts of the photosystem 2, as I said 
the first one is the pheophyton it is slowly transferring the electron to the iron protein plastoquinone iron sulfur protein when we come to the cytochrome b6f complex this play a major role since it is a complex why it is a complex because it is a group of proteins it contains cytochrome b cytochrome c cytochrome f which are electron carriers it also contain ferrodoxin another important point about cytochrome b6f complex is it will act as an electrogenic proton pump i am repeating it an electrogenic proton pump so it can pump protons in the presence of electrons as the electrons are being transferred whatever energy that is being generated that energy is utilized for pumping the protons across a membrane so such a complex we are calling it as a electrogenic proton pump for every one electron that it is passing through this complex it can pump two protons so for the production of one oxygen molecule two water molecules have to split here i have given only one water molecule where a half oxygen molecule is being generated as shown but for the generation of an oxygen molecule two water molecules have to split four protons are generated also four electrons are generated for every one electron that is being transferred two protons are pumped so all together four electrons are transferring and therefore eight protons are being pumped across a membrane this pumping of the protons will create a gradient and the energy coming out of this proton gradient is trapped in the form of atp so it is the cytochrome b6 complex b6f complex where the adp along with an inorganic phosphate is converted into an atp plastocyanin it is a water soluble protein it contains copper at its active site this will act as a electron reservoir so whenever p700 is deployed of the electrons this plastocyanin will supply the electron and once the plastocyanin copper gets oxidized it will take electrons from the previous electron carriers so from p680 now we have come to the p700 p700 is called as a photosystem one the same process again occur this p700 which contain group of chlorophylls will absorb radiation at 700 nanometer wavelength gets excited act as a strong reducing agent now this is acting as a strong reducing agent gives away the electron to the various electron carriers then it will convert into a cation cation will behave as a strong oxidizing agent takes electron from the plastocyanin and drops back to the p700 the electron that is being taken from the p700 will slowly travel through an a a not we can call it as a a not it is a chlorophyll then it will pass on to phylloquinone and then to some iron sulfur proteins ferrodoxins ferrodoxin nadp plus nadp plus and finally the nadp plus is reduced to nadph so this is one of the end products of the photosynthetic z scheme in the beginning we have seen a production of oxygen atp and also nadph is produced what are the important functions of photosystem 2 we have three important functions the first one is formation of oxygen we have seen the formation of oxygen second function is the proton pumping it is an electrogenic proton pump where the protons are being pumped across a membrane which creates a gradient the energy created from this gradient is utilized in the production of atp third one is electron transport the important functions of photosystem 2 it is an electron transfer along with an electron transport it is also producing nadph then here we have seen plastoquinone this is an electron transfer member there is no metal at its active site so the important points about the z scheme is photosystem 2 and 1 produce oxygen atp and nadph so just now let us look at the combination of light reactions and the calvin cycle 
In light reactions, water is being converted to oxygen molecule. It is producing ATP and NADPH. We have seen ATP and NADPH. These two enter the Calvin cycle. Within the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide is fixed into carbohydrates. NADPH is converted to NADP+, ATP is utilized and it is converted to ADP. That ADP along with the phosphate is converted back. It is slowly coming to light reaction and it is converted back into ATP. This is a cycle. So this is about photosynthesis. Now, along with this Z scheme, the combination of light reaction and Kelvin cycle is also important. One important point about oxygen evolving complex or oxygen evolving center is it is believed that this oxygen evolving complex is functioning over 2 giga annum. 2 giga annum refers to 2 billion years. Since 2 billion years this complex is working to produce oxygen. In nature nowhere you find that water can be split that easily to produce oxygen and energy. So kudos to photosynthesis.